Hello everyone, my name is Carl. Welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to my workshop. There's been a bit of a dearth of posts from me recently. Um, that's because I've been spending all my time with my family over the Christmas and New Year period. I hope you've been doing the same. I hope you've had a fantastic Christmas and New Year. I certainly did. We're now up to about 226 subscribers, so that's fantastic. Um, we've reached the 200 point over the Christmas period, as I said in my post when I was on board the ship. And since then, we've had another 26 people come along. So thank you very much to all those people that have come along and joined in with the channel. And thank you to the, the people that have been here since the inception of it. I really appreciate it. And you're helping me continue with things and get things moving on and giving me the motivation to continue, basically. So that's fantastic. I really thank you for that. And thank you for your patience and sticking with me. In this episode, we're going to be looking again at uh, Yarnfest at the uh, five Acme thread and we're going to be making what I hope will be the final fingers crossed test nut that should hopefully screw onto the thread because we now have a 63 tooth gear and we also um, know all the mistakes that I made in the past um, trying to make this nut and trying to make this female thread so we're going to get on now and we're going to cut some stock, uh, some ABS. We're going to bore it out to the correct size, which is 0 0.905 inches. And we're going to try and put a female thread into that that actually fits onto the male screw thread. So uh, let's see if in this workshop full of machine tools, we can't make two threads that actually fit each other. <laughs> Chance would be a fine thing, wouldn't it? All right, so we'll get on with it now. Right, so we're on the lathe. We have got... The 63 tooth gear fitted in place of that 60 tooth gear that we had before that was obviously incorrect. We've also got this special type of uh, insert fitted which is a, 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 um, a fibre insert with, a, with an ink backing. Um, uh, I believe some people call it a felt pen. And what we're going to do is we're going to operate the machine. We've got the lead screw engaged. Um, we're in L2 on the feed gearbox, which is what we should be according to the uh, spreadsheet on Dr. Al's miscellany that we've spoken about in the past. And we're now going to run the machine. We've got the uh, the five, I think you can see that there, the five TPI gauge, which is actually not, um, as I've said before, it's not Acme, but it, it's five TPI. So it will uh, give us an idea of where we're at. And we're going to check to make sure that we have in fact got uh, five TPI before we go any further. Um, we've been here before, so I just want to make sure. Okay, so let's start the machine up now. Um, we should be doing something in the region of probably 15 to 20 RPM. Um, we'll just let this pen put a scratch or put a, a mark on here that we can actually measure. And we'll go from there. Okay, so here we go. Hopefully it should put a mark on there, uh, which it is doing. So we'll just let that run for a minute until we've got a good bit, uh, about an inch that we can measure. A bit more than an inch there now, I think. Right, that'll do. Stop the machine with the much vaunted uh, reverse and rapid stop switch. Okay, so let's have a look. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this. I hope so. Right, so I think, I think you can see there, and I can see too, that that is bang on. 5 TPI as we should expect it to be. Um, I'll just turn that light off. I think that may, may actually be making it worse for you guys anyway. There we go. Yeah, you can see that's definitely 5 TPI. So we're good to go with getting set up to cut the thread. Um, I'm liking that. Uh, finally, we've got uh, to a place where we need to be. So let's uh, strip this lot down. We'll get it set up and we'll bore out the uh, the ABS blank or the Delrin blank and we'll start cutting a thread. So this is what I use to cut my stock with nowadays. I used to have a big SIP bandsaw but I sold it to my friend Richard who now uses it in, in his uh, fabrication shop. And this is just a little, well I suppose it's a porter band mounted on a stand really. Um, I guess it's a copy of the Makita or DeWalt ones that you can get. I got this from a well-known supermarket here in the UK called Lidl. And they do, uh, or Aldi actually it's called, and they do lots of tools. Um, most of them are pretty decent quality actually, especially for the home gamer. Um, so let's get on and we'll, we'll cut a piece of this Delrin. <laughs> so 
so it's perfectly happy on the floor this little saw um, I don't really have anywhere else to keep it so I just keep it in a corner and when I need to use it I pull it out and um, yeah it's a great little piece of equipment right, let's get a facing cut made in this and then we can get, uh, get a hole punched in it and start threading Nice. Right. We'll get a drill up and we'll get this uh we'll get this We'll change that out now. Apologies for the shaky camera. It's on. You're on the tailstock, so uh, enjoy the thrill. Right, what are we going to poke through there? Put a twelve mil through it. Going to ultimate, ultimately put a twenty mil through this. 0.905 being somewhere in the region of of uh, 22 mil. So as per usual, we're mixing measurements. We'll swap. We'll swap. We'll swap over. Can't get my words out. We'll swap over to Imperial once we start boring it out. But for now, we'll just get holes through it. Through it then, Beauty of having a VFD. It's got 430 RPM there now. through. Right, let's get this beast out and we'll get this chuck out as well. Because we're now going to swap over to a 20 mil. Here it is, it's actually MT2. So we'll put this the uh, the adapter sleeve on it, which is here. I'll just do that now. There we go, that was hammered, that was banged against a, uh, a rubber surface, you'll be pleased to know. Nothing injurious. Chuck away. I like to put my gear away. As I'm working, I don't like to leave things lying out, just check the bore of that. The tailstock bore's okay. This is nice and clean. Let's put that in there. Right. I've got things lined up in all. It's kind of laid out in here now in such a way that I can actually gain access to things quite easily. Things that I need to use on a regular basis. Oh. Things that are part of an, a process in terms of like drilling, for example, I have things laid out in a certain order so I can take them out of the box, the tool cabinet, and put them back in again when I've finished. Right, let's get this through. Slow it down a bit. better.
about 218, 220 RPM. And we're through. Right. I know what you're thinking. Oh, this channel's boring. See what I did there? Well, it's about to get a whole lot more boring now because I'm going to get up the boring tool. So I just put Clarence the boring bar through that hole we just put the uh, 20 mil drill through just to uh, clean up the, uh, the internal surface uh, and true it up. And I've taken a measurement and what we've got now is... 0.795 inches if I can get that to focus for you yeah there you go so that's uh, 0.795 and I will uh, 0.795 one actually so what we'll do now is we'll get the DRO set up and we'll get this opened up um, to 0.905 or 0.910 thereabouts so we need to take about 110 to 115 thou out of here to get it to the correct uh, core diameter for the thread um, and you'll note we're back on imperial measurements now so uh, that's what we're going to stay on now until we finish this so I've just dialed a cut in of 50 thou on the DRO so we'll take that out of here and we'll have another measure So we'll get the uh, bar gauge in there now, we'll see where we're at. So after that pass with the boring bar, let's get this in focus. We're at 0.843 now, so uh, we'll carry on. Okay, so we're taking about 62 thou out of it now. That should get us to where we want to be. So we'll get the ball gauge in that, give it a measure. Let's move this out of the way so I don't cut myself on it. Let's give this a go. Incidentally, when you're using a mic to measure these things, I always try and just use feel rather than the ratchet because I've noticed over the years that you can actually compress these if you're not careful using the ratchet. Um, kind of, you know, you see some people using it like a football rattle almost. Well, I've never really been one for the ratchet. I just prefer to use feel and give it a couple of um, iterations of the measurement until I'm happy with it. Not until it's where I want it to be, obviously. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Until I think I've got a reliable measurement is what I'm basically trying to say. And that's not in focus, but then nothing I do ever is, is it? So we've taken a measurement, and I'm very happy because... Focus, come on, you can do it. I want you to see this. 0 0.905... 5. Now, you know, I'm going to take that. So, you know, there you go, Mr. John Count. Balance counts work every time. Balance counts, balance cuts. I'm really terrible with my vocabulary today. It's horrendous. But, um, yeah, 0 0.9055. And some change. The 5, as some people would say. I'm happy with that. So we can proceed now with uh, getting the threading tool set up and getting everything uh, so we can uh, start cutting a thread in this beastie. I just wanted to show you this one more time so you can see there's no funny business. I've just carefully placed the micrometer down on a piece of white paper because I keep doing this, showing you the micrometer malarkey, and uh, a lot of people do it, and I just w I wonder sometimes, do people actually read it? Do they can they see it? But you can see there, there's no funny business. Um, you know, there's no parallax error here. We're zoomed in. That's point nine zero five five, as I said before. So balance cuts are the dog's doodars. Okay, so we are now ready. We're set up to cut a thread, a five TPA. 5 TPA, 5 TPI thread, no less, in the blank. So we have got, and I'm showing you this more for my sanity than anything else, really. We've got the, the top slide 
or the, the compound set over to 14.5 degrees. And you'll remember um, I showed you uh, in the last video, um, which I think was um, Mill Resto 5, the use of the DTI there, or the, 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 the clock, um, against the, the top slide to give us the actual movement. And I, I went through the trig of that, of why, why we do this um, in the last video. We have the much vaunted uh, carbide uh, Acme tool or Acme threading tool set up and it is square to the job as you can see using the old uh, the time honoured fishtail there. And we have the gearbox set to L2 which is what we want. We have our 63 tooth gear in. All we need to do now is engage the lead screw and we are ready to go. Um, Compound or uh, cross slide rather is set uh, to zero. So we will be the process that we're going to be doing once the lead screw is engaged and the lead screw will remain engaged is cut, uh, put on with the top slide, take a cut through, then um, stop the machine with the much vaunted rapid stop, full turn out, back out again, reverse it out. Full turn back in again, put some more cut on, and then away we go. And we'll continue with that until we get to the 0.11 depth that you'll remember. You'll all be kind of interning that almost in a liturgical fashion by now, the number of times I've done this. So we'll take it directly to the 0.11 um, depth that's indicated, and that'll be my wife phoning to ask me if I put the washing on, and then we'll stop and we'll try the thread. Right, so hopefully you've got a good view there. I've got you focused in here looking at the tool as it enters the work and you should see the first cut so I'm going to put a tenth out cut on now so that's tenth out cut on now pre-touch this off lead screw is engaged so we'll start the machine and away we go There goes the first cut. Okay, that's the tool clear. One full turn out. Reverse it. I'm going at 40 RPM here because uh, it's all my old heart can stand um, the way things have been going. Okay, that's a tool out. One full turn back in. And another tenth out of cut. And away we go. Hopefully you can, you can see that. That's the tool clear. One full turn out. Reverse it. And stop. One full turn back in. Another ten thou. In we go. Stop. One full turn out. Reverse it. Full turn back in. Another ten thou. Right, I'm going to move you, I think, so you get a different well, handheld now. So, uh, you know, let's just go with it. We we'll put another ten thou cut on, so through we go. One 
watch for the tool emerging. That's it out. One full turn out. And reverse it. Turn that light off, it's not doing us any favours, I don't think. One full turn back in. And another ten thou. And away we go. It's really difficult to show you what's going on because it's black inside there, as you'll no doubt have noticed. Okay, tool's clear. We stop it. One full turn out. Reverse. Stop, one full turn back in, and another ten thou. And I think when I'm doing this in the bronze, I'm going to have to do some spring passes, but we'll, uh, we'll have a discussion about that. Um, so I'm going to carry on in this vein now until I get to the 0 0.11 depth um, because basically you can see what I'm doing here. Um, we've done it before a few times now, I think, um, as you've uh, no doubt noticed to your cost. Um, thanks for sticking with it. So we'll carry on and when we get to a point where we can uh, try the thread in, we'll do that and we'll bring you back. Right, so we've arrived at what might be termed the moment of truth. Um... I did take the last cut and truth be known, I tried the um, the lead screw in there and it did start to go in and it was going in nicely but it was a, a tighter fit than I wanted. So I took another two cuts of two and a half thou each. So essentially on top of the point one one zero, I took an extra five, an extra five thou. So we ended up taking uh, an extra five thou on top of everything else. But what I've got now is the lead screw uh, through the, the bore of the machine spindle. I've got the uh, the skew gear on, the helical gear, just so I can turn it. And um, you can see there, I am happy as Larry now because we have got a really nice fit. Make sure you're seeing that. I'm going to take it out of the lathe and give it a try. It has got some... Um, the weight of the screw basically binding it up a little bit uh, but that is uh, beautiful that's that's worked a treat so we'll take it out of the machine we'll have a better look at it I've now got the nut out of the machine here it is safety glass is on because I'm, I'm about to blow this out with air just to make sure that there's no swarf or bits and pieces nasties in the thread So this is the moment of truth, here we go. And that is going on there nicely. Very nicely, in fact. In fact, I would say that almost feels as if, I don't know if you've ever made a Delrin nut or seen it done where um, you actually cut the Delrin in half and you, and you kind of melt it onto the thread, you form it on. It almost feels like a zero backlash nut that's made like that. So I'm just wondering if I need to increase the core diameter uh, somewhat. I'm going to take these glasses off because they're bugging me. Increase the core diameter, um, the minor diameter, before we start cutting the thread up to maybe 910, 915, something like that. I took the extra 5,000 um, out of this. 
I took it to point one one and I tried the screw in and it was it went in and it was going and it, it felt like it should be like uh, you know it wasn't a pitch error or anything like that um, but it was just a little bit tight so I took two 2.5 thou cuts um, and tried it after each one and after the second uh, one which which gave me the extra five thou I got a fit like that um, which I would I, you know it's almost a perfect fit. Uh, you know, there's no play there at all, and there does need to be some. So perhaps I should have put that five thou onto the minor diameter to begin with. Um, I think I'm going to do another another test nut and take it out to point nine one zero or point nine one two, something like that, and see what difference it makes. Um, I'd rather go through Delrin than. Uh, make a mistake in the bronze. Perhaps I'm being over uh, over cautious. Um, I don't know. I mean, possibly, but yeah, I'd rather get it right. And I've got all the time in the world. Um, but that's nice. I like that. Um, that's really nice. I'll bring you in a bit closer and show you. We'll put you on the uh, on the stand. So this is a, a look inside the nut. Um, it's had the screw through it a few times now. Uh, I think the finish is quite good. Um, it does appear to be a little bit of flank tearing there, but I think that's from putting the screw through it, to be fair. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. It looks okay. It looks pretty good. Um, so we'll zoom out now and we'll try the nut in it. Zoom out, the other zoom out. Oh, by the way, that was my mum on the phone, not my wife. And she wants me to take her tomorrow to buy a carpet shampooer. So there you go. You get it all here. Domestic bliss and everything. So there's the uh, the screw. We'll try this on. Oh, come on. You can do it, Carl. So that is a, a very, very good fit on the screw. Perhaps too good. Um, it does need to have some clearance. So, yeah, we're definitely getting somewhere. We've got a, a nut and a screw that actually make together now. But there's still some little way to go, I think, before we get an acceptable result. I mean, you know, this has been made to the dimensions as specified in Machinery's Handbook. Um the 0.11 um, depth of thread particularly, that extra um, 10 thou is supposed to give you the clearance that you need for this to make correctly. Um, I mean, but this material, Delrin, it, it has got some spring to it. Um, so, you know, I didn't take any spring cuts. I just went to the to the, the, the 110 dimension for the depth. Um, and I took the extra 5 thou. And there's no telling either that that this is perfect. Um, you know, it's it's been machined to a standard, to a tolerance in the factory back in 1968. It's not forced to be exactly um, as per one inch five Acme um, specifications. So it's going to be a case, I think, of um, making the nut fit the screw, um, you know, which it now does. Um, we've now got a workable set of variables in terms of our uh, our gear ratio, our gearbox ratio, our um, change wheel ratio, and everything else, uh, and a good tool and all the rest of it, and that that works, and that goes on there very very nicely indeed. Um, a little bit tighter than probably I would like, but yeah, we're getting somewhere, and uh, I think what I'm going to do now is go and have some. You know, well, quietly congratulatory lunch. So uh, I'll maybe come back and do some more after that. So we're handheld and the usual disclaimer. What you're looking at here is it's now after lunch. I came back and I made another test nut. Um, the blank was manufactured to 0.912 was the dimension of the minor diameter. I didn't show it, obviously, because you've already seen it and... Uh, you know how to do that type of thing. I then cut the thread in it. I did take the extra um, 
five thou and it's a good fit in there now I'll show you once it's out of the machine it's easier to show you um, obviously the the dimensions that we were talking about earlier that's for a 2g fit uh, or a class 2 fit um, I can turn that by hand now when it's in there and it's got some sort of sag on it um, so it is a much better nicer fit than the other one was not as tight uh, it feels a lot nicer um, so we're, we're, you know we were looking at a close tolerance fit anyway but this is much better now. I did initially go to the 0.11 dimension as specified in Machinery's Handbook. And it was an okay fit. It was still not as, as kind of um, easy as I would have liked. So I went with the extra 5 thou again, as, um, as mentioned before on the last test nut. And it's now, uh, it's a nice uh, running fit now. So we'll take it out of the machine and I'll show you it. So let's have a bit of a look, a closer look at the two uh, test nuts that we've made today. This is the first one that we made and uh, that uh, actually was altogether too tight. Now, I made a big mistake earlier on in this video when I referred to this as like a class two, uh, a tolerance class two fit. And um, obviously that's completely erroneous because a class two fit would be, you know, would be general purpose, reasonably, um, reasonably loose fit. Um, and this is far too tight, more like a, a class three. Um, in actual fact, this is more like a class three. This is the second one that we made today. And this is the one that um, has been much more successful. Um, it goes on nicely. Um, it, it, it's not too tight. It's a good fit um, in my view. And it's the kind of fit that I would want to get from the bronze nut. Um, there's no play in it at all. Um, it runs on there lovely. And uh, this was the one that we actually, um, we opened up the minor diameter to 0.912 um, from 0 0.905 that we'd actually calculated as being the correct minor diameter for this one inch five Acme. Um, now what we've got to remember about this is it's actually 1.105 so it's not standard 1 inch 5 Acme, it's actually slightly bigger. So I think um, when they made this in, the, in, the, in the, the Harrison workshop back in 1968 as we mentioned earlier, um, obviously they made it um, not to any specific uh, standard in terms of Acme, uh, Acme threads. So we've got to make the nut to fit it, basically. So um, this is a good fit, um, still a little bit tight, really. Um, so I think what I'll do is when I come to the bronze, I'll open the uh, the minor diameter up to, to something like 0.915. And we'll go from there. Um, we'll just have a look at the interior, or at the actual threads. And uh, it doesn't look too bad. It's a, it's, it's a nice finish. It has had the screw through it, obviously, so it's looking a bit, um, I mean, it is a, as I said before, it is a little bit too tight still, so there is some, some abrasion in there where the screw's been through it, but it looks like a nice thread. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it uh, in general. Um, we've proved the process now. We've got rid of all the gremlins that plagued us earlier on. So I think the next thing we can do now is move on to the bronze um, with uh, a good set of dimensions based on these experiments, which essentially is what they've been that we've done with these test nuts. And um, so that'll be the next uh, the next video that I put out. We'll be moving on to working on the bronze and uh, making a replacement for this. So. Uh, Keep your eyes open for that when it comes out, which uh, should be in the relatively near future, I hope. So that's all I've got for you today, people. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. We've made a bit of progress today. We've um, we've actually got a, a mating nut and screw now, and we've got uh, some more information, read the dimensions that we need to look at for the minor diameter when we come to use the bronze or when we come to make the... Uh, the, the nut, the lead screw nut in the bronze. So that's good. Uh, we've definitely moved forward.
I really hope you've enjoyed watching this and watching me faff around in the workshop. Um, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed to me, please consider doing so. It really helps and it gives me uh, further sort of, um, you know, gives, gives me the will to carry on really and gives me inspiration and spurs me on. So uh, I hope you can find it uh, in yourself to do that. That would be really great if you can. And if you are subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And to all the new subscribers that have come along, again, as I said in the intro, thank you very much. You make this channel uh, for me and for all of us. So um, I'll see you on the next one. Take care of yourselves and see you soon.